So Saturday afternoon, just yeah. and um, I don't know. Joe can talk about the play. I mean, he just he, he split the two defenders that time, and you could just see after I looked at the film because I was recording. After I looked at it, it just, his knee just went in. I mean, his knee just went in. You could see it, and he just grabbed it. And at that point, I was, I was, everybody was quiet in the gym. In my, like, it just felt like it, it was like two bones added, like one, like, shifted like this. Yeah, you know, I'm not run, one to run on field. Hey, he's a grown man right now. I'm not doing that. And I always tell my wife, but when he played football, you better not run out. <laughs> but I, you know, after he was screaming and yelling and beating on the, on the floor, I, that was it. I closed my camera off. I had to run out there, man. It was bad. It was bad. Like in my head, like the first thing I knew when I, I was thinking in my head was like, dang, my junior season is gone. Like, but like in my mind, I was like, nah, like I, I think it's just a, a twist. I think I just twisted it. Personally, ACL never even came into my mind. I was just thinking yeah. spring. Um, it didn't really swell up. I, I don't think I walked off the court. Sat on the bench and I was like, nah, I gotta go to the hospital. Like I gotta get extra and see what's up with it. We were like, okay, it's probably just a sprain. Went to the hospital. They, they said it was, it could just be an MCL sprain or just a, a plain knee sprain. Oh yeah, you heard, you heard, you heard it pop, pop, but everybody kept saying, did you hear it pop twice? Some yeah. well, maybe it has to pop twice for ACL, but like I said, ACL just never even entered my mind. So we're just thinking sprain, and he's like, what if I'm out for six months? I'm like, well, you just have to be out for six months. What if it's not a sprain? Well, if it's not, you know. So we're going through all these different scenarios, and you know, whatever it is, it is. Three days later, get the MRI. Sitting in the room, he comes in. Two minutes. Starts tweaking around with the blur. I don't even know if the doctor even looked at the MRI, but like this, it's the movement of my knee using my toe right here. He's like, it's classic ACL tear. To be honest, after when he first said that, like, I just couldn't, I couldn't hear nothing he said after the, after he said that to my ACL. Like my heart just sunk, sunk deep. We all and dropped our heads. Heart like just like and dropped. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy is just like, oh, uh, you know, first he looked like he kind of wanted to tear up a little bit, then he got himself together. I mean, we were just like, we were blown. I mean, I, I, just, I just didn't know what to think after that. And called like the second the doctor walked out, and Jared told him it was an ACL tear, and you could hear him on the phone say, oh my God, no. Yeah, and then, um, like I get in my bed and just start thinking like, dang, I, like, I really won't be playing basketball for like another year. He, he got a little depressed there for a minute and just kind of stayed in his room. Yeah, a little worried for Wouldn't come out. Um, my coach kept telling me like, don't feel sorry for yourself. Just get back, do your rehab and just try to get back better than ever. You know, they said <laughs> he's going to go through the highs and the lows and and all that stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's tough when I go to a, a game and, you know, think of what he could be doing out there. <clears throat> when you see your team like doing bad or, or like they make a turnover, like, they they do something that you wouldn't do. Like you just know, like you 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 bring so much to the table, but you can't do anything. You can't do anything right now. It is what it is. I I look at it as his rest period before he enters into phase two of his yeah. of his career. To be honest, as soon as he did, I knew. I knew. I knew it was, it was like when someone screams like that, banging on the floor like that, you know something serious. Like he had the exact same screech as Jeremy. Did not look good. The trainers told him it was just an LCL sprain. Yeah, the LCL sprain. I was like, nah, like you need to get the MRI. MRI is gonna tell you more. I was like, I told her, I was like, I'm sorry. That's it's the same way Jeremy sounded. The same way. Woke up, so with surgery you can't eat nothing. So like 12, like when, when, the, when the clock hits midnight on that Tuesday, I have surgery on a Wednesday. You can't eat eat anything till like after the surgery. So to keep it like your bloodstream clean and then 
Well, you can't have any liquids after 7 a.m. That, that day on Wednesday. I woke up. Can, I, I, I don't got no energy. Like they can tell I have no energy. Um, get to the hospital, put the IVs in me, right on my, like like in, in this nerve right here. So like I couldn't feel any of my leg. That like, I, he, he put the needle in like my, my hip and then started moving around like that was a, that was probably the worst preparation part of it. But after the surgery, like that, that's probably the worst pain I've ever felt. Everything you do is uncomfortable. Everywhere you sit is uncomfortable. You, you, you can't walk. It's weak, it hurts. Like two hours later, they start hurting, and then you have you have to go get the get the pills that you need. The pills really don't be, work. Like, I mean, it makes it, it makes it tolerable, but like it's not gonna take the whole pain away. Um, then like it got to like 11, 12 o'clock at night, and it just started burning. I tried to get up to go to the bathroom, like all the blood rushed down to it. I couldn't. Like that was like the worst. I rehab two days after the surgery. Once he started going to physical therapy, I think that helped him mentally. Like he was back on getting back on the road to recovery. Just trying to get the strength, trying to get the quad firing, um, trying to get the hips, the hips stronger. They they want you to bend it as much as possible to try to get the flexion back to it. When the only days that it gets bad is when when I had PT that day, and then after it would just be sore for like a, like a while. Uh, I mean, basketball, community yeah, here, the coaches, coaches, people from Nike, USA, Coach Show, um, Samson, reach out to me, everybody, people in, in the TTO organization, everybody on Instagram. Oh, yeah. I mean, they were calling. NBA trainers. I mean, yeah, USA basketball. People I mean. sending stuff. I mean, it was just, you know. They, just everybody who heard him was just so supportive. He, he just got so much support and it was unreal. So people who had you know, given him offers, they called immediately. Like, don't, don't worry, worry about, about it. it. Good. That's the last thing you need to worry about. Just go ahead and get better. So the support has, has, been, has been there. Great. My final four list is Duke, Kentucky, Villanova, and USC. He went down to four on his birthday. His birthday was November 1st, so he cut it down to four. I just felt like it was a, it was a time to get over with quick. My parents wanted to get over with quick, too. My belief is if you have 10 schools, you don't know who's going to go to the ninth and 10th school. So I feel like this is the best four for me. Villanova, they were the Coach J. Rice always told me, like, get me prepared mentally physically for the NBA, it doesn't matter if it takes one, two, three years, you just, you just don't have me ready. Um, Kentucky, Coach Cal always just preaching, trying to get us to fulfill my dream. Going to the NBA, he's just trying to make that happen. Duke and yeah, Kentucky basically the same thing, just trying to make my dream happen. And then with UNC, um, Roy Williams just preaches that uh, he's coached a lot of good guards, he lets his guards go. And then, like, like uh, Duke and Kentucky, like all four of them, he tried to sell me out. I think it, um, I think it was very mature. A lot of people are like, why'd you do it so early? You know, we're a junior. Um, but we had a lot of advice, you know, we talked to some NBA scouts and coaches and things like that. And so I think it was a mature move on his part, personally. This is different. This is timeless. This is timeless. Our faces change. Our faces change. Our standards don't change. Our standards don't change. Our standards don't change. The game evolves. Our goals don't change. For three. Oh, I didn't see it.